Over the last several days, we've seen significant gains made by ISIL, a terrorist organization that operates in both Iraq and in Syria. Very prowess. They are tremendously well funded. Oh, this is beyond anything that, that we've seen. So we must pre prepare for, for everything. Beyond anything. Prepare for everything. Want more? And one of those groups is ISIL. Let's be clear about ISIL. ISIL is a terrorist organization. I've been telling you for two years that Islamic extremists are determined to kill you and telling you for months that ISIS is coming for you. And on top of that, I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but Paul, that's not true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's you want not me to read true. From the, uh, Whether I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Has Rand, very, Paul, has Rand Paul ever been to Syria? Has he ever met with I, ISIS? Has I'm, he ever I'm met with, with fight, any of these people? No, no, no. I, they, we're going to have a fight. I don't want to get in a fight with him at all. Yeah. But it's not true. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. Good right. evening, sir. Good evening. Um, ISIS, what are we going to do about it? Kill them. In the strategy to degrade and ultimately destroy, our objective is clear. And that is to degrade and destroy ISIL so that it's no longer a threat, not just to Iraq, but also the region and to the United States. And in the end, the unanimous opinion was that ISIS poses such a significant and growing threat that degrading its ability to do harm just isn't enough. We're providing the president with those options to, uh, to degrade and destroy ISIL's capability. That's the end game. Degrade and destroy, not that, contain. Uh, no, it's not contain. It's exactly what the president said. Degrade and destroy. And when that's finished, they should know we will follow them to the gates of hell until they are brought to justice. Because hell is where they will reside. Hell is where they will reside. Baghdad, 2003. American and British troops invade Iraq. The night sky turns to day as hundreds of bombs find their targets. Tanks roll down city streets. In a few short weeks, the Iraqi military is crushed. The mission is said to be accomplished, yet American troops remain there for more than a decade. Some experts have a shocking theory why U.S. soldiers remained for so long. Iraq has long been known as the location of one of the oldest stargates on planet Earth. Current theory on the Iraqi stargate places the device beneath the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, the first great city of the world. It is also the site of the Sumerians' grandest temple called the Great Ziggurat. In 1922, the British explorer Woolley was sent to Iraq to explore the ancient city of Ur for artifacts. But legend has it that what Woolley found was not just an ancient city, but an entire ancient complex, possibly housing a stargate. Just as Woolley is not the first to explore the temple in modern times, he is also not the last. In the early 1980s, Saddam Hussein orders a massive restoration project at the Great Ziggurat, effectively transforming the temple into a fortress. The Ziggurat of Ur, is purportedly where Saddam worked on his biochemical weapons. It became the center of his operations, and he even put an Air Force base there. Experts say three massive staircases leading into the temple were restored by Saddam, and not just to allow for easier access, they were also built to carry things out. The real reason the United States launched a preemptive strike against Iraq in 2003 was because Saddam Hussein had gotten into his hands some of these uh, technologies such as stargates that's when the u.s political elite became very worried that saddam hussein would go public about his discoveries about 225 miles southeast of baghdad is an area with historical historical and religious significance but the only people who get to see it are american troops reporter Molly wilkes explains it's one of Iraq's most famous archaeological sites, rising from the desert near Nasiriyah in the southeast. The Ziggurat of Ur, a massive 4,000-year-old temple pyramid and the surrounding ruins of an ancient Sumerian city. 
The ziggurat was almost completely off limits to the public under Saddam's regime. Back then, tour guide Daif Mussen didn't get much business. During the time of Saddam, he made the tours difficult to come to for Iraq. He put in checkpoint and putting Iraqi soldiers in it. Uh, when they came here, also not picture here and not picture there. The only regular tourists now are busloads of U.S. soldiers from nearby Camp Adder on a sightseeing excursion they'll never forget. U.N. report accuses U.S. troops of badly damaging ancient ruins in Babylon during the 2003 invasion. But the U.S. is widely credited with preserving and protecting the ziggurat. American advisors are trying to help the Iraqi government excavate the site, excavate the site, excavate the site. American advisors are trying to help the Iraqi government excavate the site and open it to the public. Still, infrastructure and security will have to improve before the area becomes a viable destination for Western tourists. So we're standing at the bottom of the stairway to heaven. Stairway to heaven. So we're standing at the bottom of the stairway to heaven, and uh, we've just been looking around the excavations that Leonard Woolley did in the 1920s. I think so. Um, a fantastic amount of work has gone on. But Jane is back to to, to restart. Really. That's what I hope to do. Yes, the British Institute for the Study of Iraq has very kindly sponsored a visit here, and the idea is to find somewhere to do start up some new British excavations. And the idea is to find somewhere to do start up some new British excavations. But we found a little place nearby which belongs to some of the early and interesting areas that you can't get out here. Um, and that's a seven year project, it's not just a solution you're going to hope to do. No, we will hope to do annual seasons for seven years. We've got the University of Manchester on board, a lot of the British Institute, and we need to gather other sponsors. Most particularly, we need to raise a lot of money. But so far, we've signed it very good. As NATO members arrive for a two-day summit in Wales, British Prime Minister David Cameron has announced he's not ruling out military action against Islamic State. In a joint statement with US President Barack Obama, the PM said the two nations would confront the extremist group. Critics of the war in Iraq speculate the real reason for America's involvement is to secure Iraq's oil supply for future use. But all the oil in the world pales in comparison to unlimited access to advanced alien technology. Whether you loved or hated Bush, we may have all been wrong about the reasons for going to war. The United States knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. The UK knows that they have weapons of mass destruction. Any country on the face of the earth with an active intelligence program knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Which could be activated within 45 minutes including against his own Shia population. Imagine what the world would be like with him in power. The idea is to try to help change the Middle East. Now look, I did, part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was, uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq, and I also talked the need to advance a freedom agenda. And so my question, my answer to your question is, is that imagine a world in which Saddam Hussein was there, stirring up even more trouble in a part of the world that uh, had so much resentment and so much hatred that, three, that, that people came and killed 3,000 of our citizens. You know, I, I've heard this theory about, you know, everything was just fine until we arrived and, the, you know, kind of, the, the, you know, stir up the hornet's nest theory. It just, it just doesn't hold water as far as I'm concerned. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens before we started the freedom agenda in the Middle East. They were... What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing, except for it's part of, and nobody's ever suggested in this administration that Saddam Hussein ordered the attack. Iraq was a... Uh, Iraq, the, the, the lesson of September 11th is take threats before they fully materialize, Ken. Nobody's ever suggested that the attacks of September the 11th uh, were ordered by Iraq. I have suggested, however, that resentment and uh, the lack of hope uh, create the breeding grounds for terrorists who are willing to use suiciders to kill to achieve an objective. I have made that case. And w one way to defeat that uh, 
defeat resentment. Today, I authorized two operations in Iraq, targeted airstrikes to protect our American personnel and a humanitarian effort to help save thousands of Iraqi civilians who are trapped on a mountain without food and water. The UN Security Council has authorized a no-fly zone over Libya. Ten of its 15 members voted in favor. There were no votes against, but China and Russia were among five abstentions. The resolution also authorizes all necessary measures. That's code for military action to protect civilians. Innocent civilians were beaten, imprisoned, and in some cases killed. That's why the United States has worked with our allies and partners to shape a strong international response at the United Nations. Our focus has been clear. Protecting innocent civilians. The necessary uh, request measures ought to be taken to stop the uh, violence, to put an end to the deterring situation in uh, Libya, to protect uh, the uh, uh, civilians. We can for measures to protect and safeguard the civilian population of Libya. Innocent civilians were beaten. Syria's Stonehenge. Mysterious ruins in desert could be 10,000 years old, but scientists can't get near to investigate. Wow, this is very interesting now, isn't it? This article appears on Mail Online and was published on the 26th of June, 2012. A mysterious ancient building in Syria, described as a landscape for the dead, could be as old as 10,000 years, far older than the Great Pyramid. But scientists have been unable to explore the ruins unearthed in 2009 because of the conflict in the region. The strange stone formations were uncovered in 2009 by archaeologist Robert Mason of the Royal Ontario Museum, who came across the stone lines, circles and tombs in a near lifeless area of the desert. Breaking news right now, the U.S. military begins airstrikes against ISIS in Syria. CBS 2's Dick... <laughs> As this is all unfolding, Dick. Indeed, it is, Maurice and Christine. The strikes are still ongoing. We expect them to continue through the morning, the U.S. hitting ISIS strongholds in Syria. This video just in from social media. It reportedly shows the airstrikes, although this has not been confirmed. The Pentagon says the attacks include a mix of fighters, bombers, and Tomahawk missiles. The idea to strike a large, decisive blow, and we're told the operation is intense. It's, there's something here. It's wonderful. It's very cool. Yeah, there's just something elemental about it. There's something that, where you kind of feel like yeah. it should always be there. Yeah. Right? Well, when you think that it, that, that it comes out of. Yeah. Oh, Something right basic. Here. Yeah. 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 Doesn't it? Very much so. Yeah. Spectacular. It, and it's it's funny, you don't tire of it. You know, I'm lucky enough to be here. Yeah, I could, I could come here like every day. On my own. In the morning. You know, you know? if I, I, I would come here <laughs> yeah. and just kind of. If it wasn't like a monument, I'd sit on one of these rocks and I'd just <laughs> watch the sunrise. And yeah. It's definitely. It would, it would really. It would cleanse your mind. Yeah. yeah. Huh? yeah. Really I'm just going to stand here for a second. Yeah, no. Yeah, we can give you a minute. Go yeah, give me a minute. I want yeah, to do that just... CERN's known around the world. 
The Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator helped the European Organization for Nuclear Research detect the Higgs boson. A hundred meters underground, inside the LHC, two high-energy particle beams travel at almost the speed of light, guided by superconducting magnets before they're made to collide. The four detectors where collisions take place along the LHC are also being upgraded. The LHC hasn't run since the Higgs boson discovery was announced, as it's being revamped. The 27-kilometre-long LHC under the French-Swiss border suffered technical faults shortly after being switched on, so it's never operated at full power. After a two-year switch-off, it'll be restarted in early 2015 and will run at 14 trillion electron volts, double its previous speed, says engineer Jean-Philippe Toc. As the energy will be almost double, it means that the energy stored in the uh, magnet, so the energy we have to deal with and to control, is almost multiplied by a factor of four. And when that's finished, they should know we will follow them to the gates of hell until they are brought to justice. Because hell is where they will reside. Hell is where they will reside.